What's up, guys? Welcome to part two of maintaining this thing. Trying to make it sort of usable. Anyway, in the last video, basically we kind of reached halfway point. So let's just kind of carry on the work from here. Let's start off with trying to remove the final drive blocks. Gonna be fun. And actually I've been soaking them with some fluid for at least four days now. And the best part is that I don't really need to make a tool. No way, man. Wow, I did not expect that. That was easy. Man, I even bought this thing so I could use it with my nut buster. Maximum power. But that was like nothing. You? Is there any oil there? Hmm. I was expecting mud. Like, literally mud. Not half bad. Not half bad. The drain block, huh? It's located somewhere. Down below, I guess. Yeah, I'm guessing it's this one. But I can't find the level block where, where the level needs to be. I wonder what this is. Like some oil has leaked from here. Also, what? What is that supposed to be? No idea, I'm just gonna... But what is up with this? Best case scenario would be that it's some sort of a drain block. If any oil leaked from the final drive into the... So behind these two doors, there are the steering brakes. If you pull the lever inside the gap, either the one side or the other side, which will stop the track from spinning on either side. And that will enable you to turn the machine. Now I know for a fact that usually the um, clutch housing, it has a hole under it. So if any oil leaked into the clutch housing, either from the engine side or from the gearbox side, that oil would drain out. If the clutch got oily or wet, then it will start slipping and, and be completely useless. We will open up the hatches later, we need to clean it out. I remember it was oily in there, but these brakes are also built on the same principle. If they get wet with oil, they will just slip and then I will be unable to turn the machine. It will just go straight, either forward or backward, but I can't steer it. I'm guessing that's what this hole is for, for draining oil. And... It's the same socket that goes here, but again, I'm not sure if I can. I mean, it's not the same size. Why is it smaller? I can't tell because I can't see anything. Perhaps it is there. 
Nej, det är inte så mycket. Wow, it actually worked. What the hell? <laughs> Wish I had one of those uh, pneumatic uh, diamond grinders. Very small, compact grinders. Wish some, wish some company send one of those my way. But for some reason, the only offers I'm getting these days are either some stupid laser levels or bunch of e-bikes. What a shock! I was pretty sure I would need to bring the welder here or something. Not great. That is not great. Check this out though. The block. <laughs> That's a lot of metal there. Actually not that much. It's mostly mud. I'm pretty sure the gears, they're huge. So it's... So, so this is nothing. It's gonna be bloody messy this. I would say not, not half bad. That's better. This was the biggest uh, beast it had. I don't. Know, looks like, looks like something broke off from somewhere.
And this is why I hate working outside. No matter how hard you dry, you, s you still spill a bit of oil here, here and there. Well, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, there's probably a check plug somewhere. But I just can't find it, man. Yeah, seems about right. 10 liters per drive. Think it's about the same. Mm. That's great, guys. See the, all that wetness? That is not good because this thing here is the brake or steering mechanism uh, and there's even some oil on there. Uh, if this does not brake, then I'm unable to really steer the machine. And like I guessed, that hole down there is the drain hole and it's completely covered in mud. There's a lot of mud down there. Looks like toilet paper. So much treasure. Well, it's not perfect, but uh, definitely better. Well, at least the drain pipe down there is nicely open. I'm pretty sure on this side it's leaking from both sides. So this side would be the gearbox side, and that side would be the final drive side. Then again, the final drive fluid is like somewhere here. So I don't think it will even reach this compartment so it actually just might be the gearbox side that's leaking but anyway let's uh okay that's a bit better definitely easier than doing a complete rebuild because of some stupid seals and so far the steering mechanism it works great the thing turns on a dime so i just um, got to open up these two hatches once every while and just spray it over with some uh, brake cleaner 
because uh, replacing that seal there, which is somewhere there, it, it's just uh, not worth it. It will probably take like um, a week of dismantling stuff. It's a complete nightmare job and I don't really want to do it. Another option would be to install new steering brakes. I'm guessing that's even a lot easier than uh, trying to change that seal out. But uh, as long as the steering works, it's just got to keep it maintained. Should be good. I even found one bolt and a washer from that pool of mud down there. It looks like it has been eaten up a bit. Hopefully it's nothing important. Okay, that literally takes care of the final drive and brake strings. Track rollers. It's gonna be fun. Nope. That looks pretty tight. Looks pretty good too. Four of them were super tight, but um, this one, the side of the roller has been worn out and there's a chunk missing from the top corner here. So I'm guessing it's good for maybe well, my lifetime, considering how much I use this machine. But eventually this should be changed out. Well, there's like maybe eight millimeters of steel left. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but it's something. Same deal, guys. I'm unable to spin the outer tracks, but the inner rollers, I mean, they're super light. Super duper tight. No wobble to them at all. So that's that's really great. Great news, guys. New rollers would probably cost more than this machine is worth. That's fantastic. I'm sure if the bottom rollers are fine, then the top rollers are just as good. And the guy did tell me that the under garage is quite okay. He also mentioned one of the rollers is bad, but it's not bad because of a bad bearing. It's rather bad because of the side has worn away on it. I mean, you can clearly see that this uh, track is grinding against something like fresh steel here. So my guess is it's grinding against the roller itself. I'm going to leave it for now. Yeah, it's, I think it's not worth it just to replace one roller. Have to take the entire track off. Probably gonna need another bulldozer for that. And then I can get access to the roller and swap it out. But I'm gonna keep it until it well disappears. So rollers are okie dokie. Uh, track drive bearings. What the, what was that? Oh, I remember. Track drive, yeah. Hmm. There is a grease fitting here. Yeah. I should probably open up the hub, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a seal here, and if I open it up, I might mess up the seal. I'm not really sure how much. Grease, do I need to add? Bro, I think that's enough. I don't really want to overfill it.
By the way, this tool, it was sent to me by one of you guys. Best present ever. I'm just probably gonna ride it in a bit and then uh, add some more. In the manual, it doesn't really say how much you need to add, only that uh, you need to add it every 60 work hours. So I'm guessing a little bit every 60 hours. I wonder where the crease fitting is for this thing. It should be somewhere here. Maybe behind this. So I got this really cool uh, grease map here. It shows all the grease fittings on the machine. Everything is labeled out. And on this page, we have what type of oil or grease you need to use. But sadly, it doesn't say how much you need to put it. But anyway, we finished 29, which was the end bearings. Guessing it's this one. Tension wheel. Wait a minute. Transmission oil. The hell? Well, according to this page, block number nine is where the oil is at. So in in the center there. But um, where's the refill hole? Maybe under this plate. Hey, so is anybody home? There was supposed to be oil here. I was told, but I didn't see anything. Not great, that. I don't think it's the drain block. I think it's the check block. Maybe the fill block is up here. I'm starting to suspect something, guys. Bear with me. So here's my theory. You know the manual that I have? It's essentially a repair manual. It's not that much of a service manual. It detailedly describes how to take every part off the machine, service it, and and put it back. And I think um, why this block is described as a drain block is once you remove the flywheel housing, you're gonna lift it up with a crane or something and then turn it on the side. Then you can use this as a drain hole. Once you put the thing back together, you fill it until it starts to drip out of this hole. I mean, that's my theory. Man, this smells like uh, manure, literally. It's like somebody took a crap in there. It smells so bad. Mm. Oh, mm. pure crap. Oh, why did they? But they can't stop sniffing it. I mean, I'm not sure what's up with that. Perhaps this thing will open up now. I guess that the uh, penetrating oil really does work. Got 
of springs. Nothing else. I'm guessing it's just you know some type of um, spring thing for the for the entire assembly. I think uh, this is not supposed to be opened by me. And there is some type of a nut here, but... I have no idea. Very little amount, and it's just from here to here. Okay guys, new Nexus track tensioner, but think I'm not gonna touch it. Let's be honest, the track, the track is definitely not loose. Well, actually they seem like um, too much tension, to be honest. Yeah, definitely too much tension on them. Now, at least I figured out what's what here. So there are three bolts for the tensioning system, and this tube is filled with highly pressurized grease and you can adjust the pressure with these bolts very dangerous though you guys told me that um, there is so much pressure in that cylinder if I undo one of those bolts for example if I just try to turn this out it will fly out of here like a bullet and people have died because of that so I don't really want to I mean, even in the manual it says Warning, the tensioner cylinder is under high hydraulic pressure. Do not check visually when unscrewing plug number two. Which is that one there. Mm. This must be remembered each time the drag is loosened and tensioned. So you would not die. But then do remove tension. Unscrew block 2 by 3 to 4 turns and let the grease out. And I'm guessing the tensioning is about the same. Blah blah blah, bunch of useless crap. No idea. So I'm not planning to die today or anything. We'll not touch this thing. The tracks are a bit too tight, but I guess uh, maybe it's not a big deal. Did, did not die. What a mild success. Okay, so grease map, guys. Probably my favorite part now. Find and grease all the fittings. Apparently, there are some of them. Here we have the map. Absolutely all the fittings on the machine. Apparently, there's a total of 36 of them. Not all of them have a grease fitting, some of them are oil based. I wonder how many grease tubes I will go through. Mm. It's hissing at me. Batteries maybe then. No, yeah, batteries full. Oh, we got something coming out, that's great. Wait, I wanna try the manual one. See if uh, that's stronger than... Uh, that's stronger than Big Ben. This piece of crap doesn't work even. Do something. No. 
Now I remember why I hated those things. They never work, they're useless. Somewhere on the clutch housing. Ah, there we go. I just realized something. So whenever I'm starting this machine, um, the pony motor always tries to spin the transmission, the big one, I mean. And that's because the clutch is just frozen solid. You can't push it down when the main engine is not running. But I'm guessing uh, this flange is for when you're stopping the motor. This flange will make sure the clutch is completely disengaged from the transmission, so you could nicely start it with the pony motor. I like learn something every second now. It's crazy. But I may be wrong on that, so I don't know. Now this deal. Now, I'm not really sure what lubrication hole this is, but the book says Add some oil, bro. So let's add some oil. Just seen some better days. This thing is mildly worn out. I might put this on eBay, maybe somebody wants one. I'm gonna try to find some booth for it. Don't really wanna buy anything, maybe I can... He found something, but... Not quite right. It's like I've reached a new level in hacking, guys. This is some next level stuff right here. Bro, I had no idea Volkswagen made parts for Soviet bulldozers. That is pretty interesting. But thanks to the Volkswagen part, I'm pretty sure I can't use this thing. Maybe I don't even need it. I mean, you only turn it left or right. This is, this is like a limiter or something, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't need this bit. Bye bye. Okay, there should be three points of lubrications somewhere around the starter, but I could not find them. I looked everywhere. The book says they're here somewhere, but no idea. Looks like we're gonna get some rain, guys. It would be amazing. I mean, just check it out. The grass is just burned up. Definitely would go some rain right now. So even my Christmas tree is kind of getting brown now. Losing a bunch of needles. It does have a bunch of new growth as well, but it's losing a lot of ne needles. That's probably not great. I mean, what am I supposed to grease here? Book said add this amount of oil in here. This is the clutch. 
I mean, what? There shouldn't be no oil here. And this thing was bone dry. It's almost like basically like half a liter. Wow. Sometimes I wonder how this thing is still running. <laughs> Probably maxing out in BSI. Okay, I think that's about it with the crease fittings, except for one. I couldn't, f I couldn't find one. The one I couldn't find was Grand Crawler. Grand Crawler 11. 11. So it's supposed to be behind the bevel gear housing. So this is the bevel gear housing, and there should be some type of a Grand Crawler somewhere behind here or up here somewhere I've got a turbo up here nope not that one basically I have no idea so let's just move on a diesel engine air cleaner some type of oil some type of oil in here the bony motor now this does get oil I know this bob is filled about this much with oil but there's definitely no oil in here. Maybe something, maybe something in this area. Come on, man. What am I supposed to oil here? There's nothing to oil here. Uh, this is a gear housing for the hydraulic pump and I needed to make sure it had oil in it because if this thing went kaboo it would be almost a nightmare to fix this anyway guys uh, next up we got the track rollers the bottom rollers and the support rollers. All of them are based on the same principle as the idle wheel. So my guess is I have to open up a bunch of these hops and then just fill them until oil starts to come out. I'm not sure about the drain block. I think they don't have one. At least the top rollers are easy. And the bottom ones. I'm thinking it's uh, this one here. Yeah, that's probably it. Gonna be fun getting those open. Nope. Hmm. We have oil in it, so that's great. I don't think I can empty them. I'm pretty sure of that. In order to empty them, I should I should take them off the machine. No way I'm doing that. That's like three years of labor.
Nada. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's like rust in there. What the hell? It's completely dry, guys. There's, there's, there's no oil even on this point. Guys, I see what's going on here. I know why there's no oil in this thing. Okay, so... That's why it's empty. Let's see if the bearings are still okay. I'm kinda guessing they're busted. I mean, the bearing seems fine. It just doesn't keep any lubricant in it because of that seal. So I'm gonna do what Camerata told me to do. I'm just gonna fill the entire hub with grease, guys. It's like dirt tube already. What a bunch of vomit! I don't know. You tell me, guys. Should I leave it at that or just replace it out? If it's just the bearings, then I probably can get away with some couple of cents here and there. But if I need to change this entirely out, probably like 500 bucks at least. So. Yeah, hopefully no more surprises. Doesn't move at all, but it's hard to turn for some reason. I would say this is good. Bone dry. Again, the first one. What is up with that? Hear that guys? That is like... That is like not great. Looks like the previous owner was BSing me. He told me one of the rollers are bad. Currently we are counting three. At least that one uh, seemed to have good bearings. Just by hearing at it. I think the bearings are still there but... They're just bone dry. And we got some slack in the shaft. Okay, I'm gonna see if it uh, holds oil. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna just pump it full of grease as well. Uh, busted. Wow, I think it's like super tight now. What? I should fix rollers for a living. Would be like a millionaire until they would put me in jail. Roller jail. Anyway, guys, looks like about 50% of the top rollers are screwed. But um, I have no butt. Let's see what's up with the bottom rollers. It's like one, two, three, four, five of them on each side. Just imagine how much it would cost to order an entire set. So that's like 10 bottom rollers and four top rollers. I'm just taking a wild guess. Like eight grand at least. More than this machine is worth. Basically, if we see some black goo coming out of here, out of these holes, then we know that the seals are good 
and very likely the bearings as well but if we see a bunch of rust and no liquid at all then I'm not even gonna waste my dime pack it with grease and move on looks promising so far yep this thing is packed with oil but it's definitely good it's just I think a bit low yeah no rust just black oil I think it's good. You know, overall, I would say that the bottom rollers are doing great. All the seals and bearings seem to be okay. Not bad. Check. Support rollers. Check. Gas tank. No idea. Check. That's it guys. The entire list. Great success. Let's do the hydro. Got to flush the hydraulic tank. Finally got them filters now. And... Uh, <laughs> 100 liters of some premium piece of crap oil. Basically I just went with the cheap stuff. I figured it's good enough. By the way, guys, want to know something interesting? This dozer has been running without a hydraulic filter for I have no idea how long. Probably for years. If I just open the film. It's just broken and the pressure has been so much that it, it has even tried to suck up the filter material itself through those uh, tiny holes there. And this filter is completely rot. I have no idea how long it has been in that machine. It's completely rot, this thing. Same deal with the third one. See how it just, the filter element just tried to get through those holes. And uh, yeah, look at that. What the hell? I mean, how does this happen? Even the steel is just mangled, broken into two. Wow. So yeah, effectively that machine has been running without an oil filter. Surprisingly though, the pump still works great. I don't get it. Why people buy machines but never take care of them. I don't get it. Apparently it's a common oil filter. Bunch of different Soviet machines. The first shop I found had it in stock and they sent the thing to me in like two days. What I did not get though was one of these uh, flat seals. Now I went to three different Soviet tractor shops. Basically, they think this is um, not standard and it's been homemade or something. So instead of this, I'm gonna use a bunch of O-rings instead. I think it should be fine. Check it out guys, Russian parts. Even from the store, they're already rusting. <laughs> what a joke, that is not great. 
freaking Russian parts completely worthless. I think that's about it. Should be finished, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I figured most likely I'm gonna mess this up somehow. So I might just prepare for that. Interesting. Guys, these two blades, they're on a hinge. And I could probably clean up the underbelly of this thing. So sad that the front panel does not share the same design. Grab. Crusty, crusty. Bunch of stretcher there. I believe this tractor actually has two pumps on it. So this should be the smaller pump and this should be the bigger pump. But then again, I may be wrong here and maybe it's not a pump at all. If you haven't noticed, I know nothing. It's really heavy. <laughs> Even without the dirt, it's heavy. Check it out, guys. Out of all this dirt, I created some sort of a dam around me, like a containment vessel. So I've been kind of wondering, what is this thing? I mean, that one there is the engine oil sump, but uh, this thing, kind of a mystery right now. Maybe it's just another oil tank or the main engine. It's like do are connected, but uh, be right back. Okay, guys, I've been kind of chatting with Steve over here. He did confirm that uh, it's a double crankcase, so there's two oil pumps in it. So here's the situation right now. That thing is filled with new oil, but this still has the old sludge in it. Now, I think I can get away with just draining this pan dry and then resetting the oil level to normal. I have not started the engine yet, ever since the oil change. So the do have not mixed yet. But about the hydraulic reservoir, there is a nut down here. So I just need to open up this nut and we can drain both the hydraulic tanks. At least with this, I have a bit more control than uh, trying to take the hose off. That would be a nightmare. I mean, both the tanks would be emptying at the same time. Pretty sure my dam would not even... Uh, it, would, yeah, it would probably overfill. But first, let's revisit the engine and train the secondary sump as well. I still hope this goes a bit better than last time. Let's be honest, that was a disaster.
So basically, I'm gonna overfill a bit from the inlet part until I see. Piss off, wind! Until I see some uh, fresh oil coming out of this hole. Looks like overfilled a bit. It's kind of hard to get the, the oil level correct because the two sumps they're not located on the same height and the overflow channel from one sump to another is actually higher than the maximum level on the rod. So that's kind of weird why it's like that. I mean it would make sense if the overflow channel would be just slightly under maximum that way you can get a nice and correct level but this is just a bunch of guessing probably overfilled it but um, whatever let's focus on the hydraulic reservoir now should be enough mm, kind of scared Kind of boring. I thought I'm gonna get splashed in the face. Hmm. I was kind of hoping to get splashed in the face. To be honest, I'm really glad I decided to change out the hydraulic fluid. I mean, this this just looks this looks this just looks bad, guys. Nasty stuff, guys. Seriously uh, overdue for an oil change. The manual says every 960 hours the oil has to be changed. I'm almost positive that this is the first oil that came with the machine from the factory. Sometimes I wonder how is that pump still working? I have a lot of a lot of room remaining. Oh boy. Basically, I'm gonna break for lunch guys, gonna let it drain for a while. The magnet does have a little bit of metal on it, but uh, relatively clean compared to the other magnets.
Man, this cheap stuff looks a lot better than what came out of it. Oil, it's so clean. You can't tell through the screen. Yeah, through this it looks like empty. Or do a drained eye. It looks like overfilled. But I don't have one of those eyes, so to me it looks empty. Stupid test this. Can't go wrong with this. Yep, overfilled. But not by a lot. But anyway, hydro stuff is finished. Don't have a lot left to do, guys. Just uh, this, that, also that, that, uh, uh, what is that even? And, um, let's just uh, add one more thing. Yeah, guys, I decided to do a paint job on it as well. Because, why not? We're already doing so much. So why stop with this thing? Let's just keep going. But I'm thinking, let's do a third episode as well. I was kind of hoping to get it finished in due. But, um... I mean, this thing is a lot of work. It's been dragging on for a while now. So let's just kind of wrap this one up. And then wrap this entire project up in the next episode. What a bunch of metal. Ma Ono andista sa pennem vaatab kuidas vaatab et kas surma saan või saa. Ei saa. Sul peaks ka kiiver peas ära. Sul mul on, ju... mul on kiiver peas. Sa mõtlen. Oda võta noga, et sa raikisel endab minema nagu mul üks kord. Ei tal on peas. Ah. Töötab. Kuid lasta. Siis on ko mina ei ole küll seda taas kaasa nendes. Mark peaks oled. Kas võib tõmata? Ja. Oota ära sinna mine sinna. Tule siia redeli taha. Mida vajub vasta kiivri alla niimoodi? Nii on väga hea. Ma ole pea võru lennab sul peas. Ma ei tea, aga sulle meelik. Oota ära sinu kui kui nüüd. See oli hea, et ma toin kiivri kaasa. Jaa. Aga ära nende ärte otsas kui kui. Okei. Tää tiini juoksa. Ma ei voi juosta teie järjel. Liiga palju. 